Good day, I am Nor Hayati Betty Zainun and today I will present on the theory of advocacy planning. Besides, I also will relate the theory with cases that happen in Malaysia. As for introduction, advocacy planning is a battle of the urban planners to protect the communities from the intervention of the urban regeneration project. It is pluralistic and inclusive planning where the city planners seek to represent the various groups within the society. This advocacy planning has been introduced by Paul David Off in the early of 1960. He is an activist, lawyer and urban planner who believe that advocacy planning is necessary to represent the low-income and minority group so that they are not always left behind from the rich and powerful people. He criticized the mainstream of urban planning for its support of elite business and development interests over the poor and working class people. He then advocated the professional to spend some of their time in developing an advocacy plan for the special interest group. By the advocacy plan that involved with participation of the citizen, the plan would provide planning commission with alternative. As a result, the quality of plan making in with this group has been improved. There are three important groups in advocacy planning. First is political parties. Second is special interest group such as low income people and minority people. And lastly, ad hoc association such people that demonstrating again a problem. In order for their understanding of this theory, let's look at some cases in Malaysia. Case 1 shows that Kirby Estate resident against the direction of the state government to move to the temporary residential area without the consent. This happened due to the proposed area located far from the workplace in which will affect the daily income. Besides, the resident suggested that some alternative to the government. However, there is still no current update from the issue. This shows that there is lack of advocacy planning in the issue as the factor of the income and the concern were not taken into account in moving them to another place. Next is case 2 shows that the government plan to redevelop some residential area in Kampung Kerinci in order to improve the quality of life. Instead of redeveloping the area into some elite development, the government just focused on existing community as in order to balance the social inequality in the area. In sum, based on the understanding of advocacy planning, all I can say that advocacy planner in Malaysia were not always supportive to the social well-being and the lack of power to put the proposal into action. Moreover, plan development still not add up the community as stakeholder and decision-making team. Advocacy planning empowered winning for both groups. I believe that there is a need for the framework of city planning itself to be changed and focus more on the social reform. Thank you.